Chapter 9, Super Veg. Fudge has a friend. His name is Daniel. He's pudgy with a lot of red hair and ears that stick out more than mine. The first time I saw him, he was standing in front of Uncle Feather's cage lecturing to Fudge. Mina birds are native to India and other parts of Asia. The common house mina is a bold, fearless bird, somewhat larger than a robin. Robin, robin, Uncle, Father, Uncle Feather repeated. Shut up and listen, Fudge told Uncle Feather. Don't you want to learn about yourself? Daniel continued. The mina is a noisy, sociable bird. I'll say, I said from the doorway where I'd been listening. Daniel turned around and stared at me. Who are you? he asked. Peter, Fudge's older brother, I told him. Who are you? Daniel Mannheim. I'm six. I live at 432 Vine Street. You want to make something of it? He delivered the last sentence in a tough guy voice so that it came out sounding like, You want to make something of it? Not especially, I told him, trying not to laugh. Daniel turned back to Uncle Feather. Many minor birds learn to imitate the human voice. They can talk, sing, and whistle. The common house mina is genus Acrodothrus, species A. tristis. Daniel is a bird expert, Fudge said. So I see, I answered. You want to hear about the vulture? Daniel asked. Some other time, I told him. Daniel came for lunch on Saturday. Would you like peanut butter or tuna fish? Mom asked him. Tuna fish, Daniel said. You want to make something of it? No, Mom said, looking surprised at Daniel's tough guy line. Tuna fish will be just fine. Where's the TV? Daniel asked. I always watch TV while I'm eating. It's in the living room, Fudge said. You don't have a TV in the kitchen, Daniel asked. No, Mom said, we don't. I feel sorry for you, Daniel said, pushing back his chair. He stood up. I guess I'll have my lunch in the living room. We don't watch TV while we're eating, Mom said, so why don't you sit down and wait until lunch is ready? Daniel pouted. I won't have much of an appetite without the TV. If you're not hungry, you don't have to eat, Mom said. TV shouldn't have anything to do with it. I was thinking that it wouldn't hurt the kid to skip a couple of meals anyway. I watch Nickelodeon and the Cartoon Network, Fudge said as if anybody cared, and all the commercials. I never miss the commercials. They're my favorites. My father used to write commercials, but now he's writing a book. One time, I was in a commercial. I rode a toddle bike. No, you didn't, Daniel said. I did too, Fudge told him. I don't believe you, Daniel said. Mom brought the tuna fish sandwiches and two glasses of milk to the table. I don't eat anything with onions, Daniel said. I don't eat lima beans or peas. I only drink chocolate milk and cut the crust off my bread. There are no onions, lima beans, or peas in the tuna fish, Mom said. I knew from her voice she was about ready to tell Daniel exactly what he could do with his lunch if he didn't like it. But she walked back to the pantry and brought out the choco. You can put in as much as you like, she said, as she cut the crust off Daniel's sandwich. There, now you should be all set. Wasn't I in a commercial, Mommy, Fudge said? Yes, Mom said. Fudge was in the toddle bike commercial. See, I told you. Did you get paid? Daniel asked. I don't know, Fudge said. Did I get paid, Mommy? I wasn't there, Fudgy, remember? I was visiting Aunt Linda and the new baby in Boston. Oh, that's right, Fudge said, so he asked me. Did I get paid, Peter? You got all the Oreos you could eat, I said. I got Oreos, Fudge told Daniel. I hate Oreos, Daniel said. On the same day that Daniel was eating his tuna fish sandwich without onions, peas, lima beans, or crust, Tootsie learned to crawl. 
One minute, she was just rocking back and forth on all fours, and the next minute, she was moving across the floor. Mom ran to get Dad, and he raced upstairs for the camera. And for the rest of the day, we took home movies. Tootsie was the star. Only Daniel was unimpressed. All babies crawl, he said. After a week of crawling, Tootsie became an expert. She could move so fast, it was hard to keep up with her. Not only that, but she learned to pull herself up to a standing position. She couldn't leave anything around, you couldn't leave anything around anymore. Whatever she found went straight into her mouth, and she found everything, from crayons to spools of thread, from Lego toys to Dad's notebook. She chewed up three pages of his notes one afternoon, and it took Dad all night to try to glue them back together. Mom and Dad decided to baby-proof the house. They removed everything that Tootsie could possibly reach. Tootsie was very pleased with herself. She said, ooga ba fum fum Turtle learned to crawl, too. He'd move across the floor, flat on his belly, and Tootsie would chase him, laughing. Turtle and Tootsie were friends. I kept the door to my room closed at all times. I wasn't taking any chances. Dad put up a gate at the top of the stairs and another at the bottom. You had to be careful not to step on Tootsie. She was almost always underfoot. Put her in the playpen, Fudge wailed one day after she got into his Legos and scattered them. She needs the freedom to explore, Dad explained. Well, too bad if she gets in my way, Fudge said. She'll just have to learn that I'm her big brother. And clunk. He stepped on her arm and Tootsie screamed. On the following Saturday, Jimmy Fargo came to visit. Wow, I can't believe how much the baby's grown, he said when he saw Tootsie racing across the living room floor. When you moved, she was about the same size as my cat, and now she's a regular baby. Put a put a, Tootsie said, pulling herself up on my legs. What's she saying? Jimmy asked. Nothing, just baby talk, I told him. Jimmy was even more impressed with Uncle Feather than with Tootsie. Wow, that's some bird, Jimmy said. He speaks French. Say bonjour, I told Jimmy. Bonjour, birdie, Jimmy said. Bonjour, stupid, Uncle Feather answered. I laughed. Jimmy didn't. Hey, turkey brain, my name's Jimmy. Can you say that? Jimmy. Say that? Say that? No, Dumbo, it's Jimmy. Dumbo Jimmy, Dumbo Jimmy. No, it's just plain Jimmy. Plain Jimmy, plain Jimmy. I give up, you turkey brain. Turkey, turkey, Jimmy, turkey. Stop it, Jimmy shouted. Stop it, stop it. I quit, 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 quit. Jimmy finally laughed. Some bird. Alex came over to meet Jimmy. He said, so you're the great Jimmy Fargo. Who said I was great? Jimmy asked. Well, the way Peter's always talking about you. Yeah, well, the way he's always talk talking about you, I figured you must be the great Alex Santo. I am, Alex said. Well, then I'm the great Jimmy Fargo. After that, it was downhill all the way. It's hard to be caught in the middle between your two best friends. I think Mom knew I was having a hard time because she said, How would you boys like to go to the movies this afternoon? What's playing? Jimmy asked. Superman, Mom said. I already saw it, Jimmy said. So did I, I said, but I wouldn't mind seeing it again. I saw it twice, Jimmy said. I never even saw it once, Alex said. It was better the second time, Jimmy said. And I bet it'll be still better the third time, Mom said. Okay, Jimmy said, I'll go. He bent down to tie his shoelaces. Mom said, wonderful, and the three of you can take Fudge and Daniel. I had a quick conference with Alex and Jimmy. I don't care if Fudge comes with us, as long as I don't have to sit next to him, Jimmy said. Same for me, Alex said, and I won't sit next to the other one either. The other one is a nerd. 
same for me, Jimmy said. I went back to Mom. Okay, we'll take them, but we won't sit next to them. That's reasonable, Mom said. It's a deal, I told Alex and Jimmy. We walked into town. We were too early to buy tickets, so we showed Jimmy his father's painting in the window of the gallery. I dressed up as Anita's anger for Halloween, Alex said. My costume was outstanding, if I say so myself. You don't think you're too great, do you? Jimmy said. I'm just telling the truth, Alex said. I can't believe this guy, Jimmy whispered to me. He's usually not like this, I whispered back. I never should have gotten the two of them together. I thought they really couldn't stand each other, and they were making me miserable. Hey, let's go in and introduce Jimmy to Beverly, I said, trying to sound cheerful. Beverly greeted us. Well, if it isn't Alex and Peter and Fudge and Daniel Mannheim, Daniel said, I'm six. I live at 432 Vine. Glad to meet you, Daniel, Beverly said. And this is Jimmy Fargo, I told Beverly. You know, Fargo, Frank's son, Beverly asked. That's right. I just love your father's paintings, Beverly said. They're so original. He's working on a new one, Jimmy said. It's called Salamis on Parade. Salamis on Parade. Sorry, Salami. Sounds fascinating, Beverly said. My father likes salami, Jimmy said. Salami and onion sandwiches are his favorite. I don't eat anything with onions, Daniel said. We know, I said. Salami and onions, Jimmy said. My father could just about live on salami and onions. Beverly laughed. I'll bet he doesn't do much kissing. That's right, Jimmy said. My mother's the one who likes kissing. That's why she moved to Vermont. Well, Beverly said, I'd certainly like to meet your father someday. Maybe we can arrange that, I said, thinking that Beverly and Mr. Fargo might really like each other. And Jimmy must have been thinking the same thing, because he said, He doesn't eat salami and onions every day. On Sundays, he likes lox and eggs. I don't eat anything with onions or lima beans or peas, Daniel said. I hate crust on my bread, and I only drink chocolate milk. You're a fussy eater, Beverly said. That's right, Daniel said. You want to make something of it? No, Beverly said. I certainly don't. We have to go now, I said. We're going to see Superman. Have a good time, Beverly called. I wondered if anybody ever went into the gallery beside us. I'd never seen a customer there. Outside, a line had formed in front of the movie theater. As we were walking to the end of it, I spotted Joanne McFadden. She was with Sharon, who's always looking at the ground or the sky, and Elaine, who likes to punch guys in the stomach. I guess Joanne spotted me, too, because she called Peter and waved me over to her. Give me your money and I'll buy your ticket, she said. That way you won't have to stand at the end of the line. Mom had given me enough to treat Alex, Jimmy, and Daniel, so I passed the bill to Joanne and stood right behind her. When the wind blew, her hair hit my face, and I didn't move, even though it tickled my nose. Well, Elaine said after we had our tickets, aren't you going to introduce us to him? She nodded in Jimmy's direction. Oh, sure. Jimmy, meet Elaine, Sharon, and Joanne. Jimmy looked at Sharon for a long time. Sharon looked at the sky. I'm Daniel Mannheim, the little creep said. I'm six. I live at 432 Vine Street. That's nice, Elaine said. And who are you? She asked Fudge. Fudge Hatcher. Your little brother? Joanne asked me. Uh-huh. I never knew you had such an adorable little brother. Joanne had never said so many words to me at one time. Fudge smiled. Adorable. That's me. And I'm Daniel Mannheim. I'm six. We know, Elaine said. You want to make something of it? Daniel asked in his best tough guy voice. Yeah, Elaine said. Put him up. She made two fists and held them to Daniel's nose. Daniel started to cry. Don't hit me. Please don't hit me. I'm only six. He covered his face with his hands. 
I'm not going to hit you, you doof, Elaine said. I only hit guys my own age. Right, Alex? And with that, she belted Alex in the gut. Cut it out, you. Alex shouted a lot of good words at Elaine. Daniel jumped up and down, singing, He said the A word. He said the A word. Shut up, Elaine said to Daniel, or I will slug you. You promised you wouldn't, Daniel whined, and I'm only six, remember? Why, why don't you cut it out, Sharon said, looking at the ground. We went inside and stopped at the candy counter to buy popcorn and Cokes. Then we found seats for the kindergarten babies, got them settled, and crossed over to the other side of the theater where we found an empty row for the six of us. Alex went in first, then Jimmy, then me, then Joanne, Sharon, and Elaine. I wondered if Joanne had planned to sit next to me, the same way I had planned to sit next to her. When the picture started, Joanne offered me some of her popcorn, and when I reached into the carton, our fingers touched. Then I offered her some of mine, so our fingers touched again. By that time, my fingers were covered with grease, but who cared? I began to relax, concentrating more on sitting next to Joanne than on the movie. But maybe that was because I'd already seen it. Then right when Superman was about to kiss Lois Lane, I felt something icy cold slither down my back, and I let out a yelp. Fudge was hanging over the back of my seat with a handful of ice cubes from his Coke. Hi, Peta, You little... But there was no way I could catch him. He was already racing up the aisle. Here, Joanne said, handing me a Kleenex. Could you do it, I asked. I don't think I can reach all the way down my back. Joanne mopped off my neck and then my back, and when she'd finished, she put her hand close to mine, and the next thing I knew, we were holding hands. Hers was soft, but cold. When the movie ended, Joanne, Sharon, and Elaine walked home in one direction, and we walked home in the other. So what's it like to be in love, Alex asked me. What are you talking about, I said. What are you talking about, Alex mimicked. And Jimmy said, so when's the wedding? Cut it out, will you? I said. By the time we got home, Alex and Jimmy were talking and laughing as if they'd been best friends for about a hundred years, and I felt left out. Dad had cooked a big pot of spaghetti, and Daniel was eyeing it until Mom told him how many onions had gone into the sauce. Not only that, but Mom had fixed a bowl of peas as a side dish. And that was, no, that was funny, because we never have anything with spaghetti but bread and salad. I don't eat anything with onions, and I don't eat peas either, Daniel said. What else do you have? Nothing, Mom told him. Then I guess I'll go home for supper, Daniel said. I thought I saw Mom smile. After supper, Alex went home to get his sleeping bag, and he and Jimmy both slept on the floor in my room. I wondered why I didn't feel better about the two of them being friends. Just because they liked each other didn't mean they didn't like me, but I had a hard time convincing myself. For the next week, Fudge walked around talking to himself. To most people, he is Fudge Hatcher, a regular boy. Only his trusty minor bird and his friend Daniel know the truth. Faster than a speeding bullet, more powerful than a locomotive. Do you remember when I was born, he asked me one morning. Yes. Did I really grow inside of Mommy? Yes. Oh, he said, sounding disappointed. Why? Because if I did grow inside Mommy, then I can't be from another planet. Take it from me, I said. You are definitely from Earth. A few days later, Daniel told Fudge that he had been adopted as a baby. So Daniel might be from another planet. Fudge said. Yeah, I thought that would explain a lot. And he might even be able to fly. Don't count on it, I said. Daniel is my best friend, Fudge said. If it turns out he's from another planet, he's going to take me there to visit. Swell, I told him. Don't hurry back. You're just jealous because you don't have a friend who can fly. I don't even have a friend from another planet, I said. Too bad for you, Pita, 
and he took off, flapping his arms and calling, It's a bird! It's a plane! And that's where we'll end chapter 10 on Monday. Have a great weekend, guys. See you then.